Hi, Jeff here, and welcome to the ninth tutorial in our Diva 4.0 tutorial series. In our previous exercise, we used ArcSim to simulate the monthly heating and cooling loads for a single zone shoebox office pictured here. In today's tutorial, we'll build on this exercise and we'll look at some hourly outputs for our thermal zone. Um, we'll turn off the cooling in a design summer week and we'll take a look at the temperature profiles from an hourly standpoint to get a finer grain look at how the space is performing. And we'll focus in on the window as um, a variable for improving the, the passive performance of our space. We'll also take a look at how to understand the performance of the window from an energy balance standpoint using the hourly simulation. And then we'll take a look at the um, broader spectrum for the, the course of the whole year, how to plot the temperature and relative humidity of the space in a psychrometric chart. You can refer back to the previous tutorial to see how we set up this thermal model using the ArcSim Grasshopper components. Let's begin by modifying some of the settings for the zone and windows in the Grasshopper Canvas. I'll begin by clicking on the settings for the thermal zone. And because I want to take a look at the passive performance of our space from a, an hourly temperature profile, I'm going to go to the Conditioning tab and turn off Heating and Cooling. We're going to be focusing in on the summer week, so the cooling um, especially has to be turned off. And I'll leave the other settings the same for now from the previous tutorial. Next, I'll look at the window settings. So I'll go ahead and click here on window settings. We are using a double pane clear glazing construction, which is the material, the glazing construction assembly that we chose for the last simulation. We'll keep this as our default for now, and we'll look at what the impact is on our space's performance by changing this material later on in the, in the tutorial. Now we can go over to the Run Energy Plus component. We can change the name of our simulation to Hourly, and the name of the directory to ArcSim results backslash Hourly. Before we run the simulation, we'll want to adjust the settings for our Energy Plus simulation so that we can change the run period, the resolution, and the outputs that we're generating using this component. So I'll click here on the settings of the Run Energy Plus component. For the run period, in the, in the previous tutorial, we used the entire year for our period. We were looking at the heating and cooling loads for the whole year. But now let's focus in on a specific week in the summer to look at how the interior zone temperatures correspond to the exterior temperatures for just one given week. So let's pick August 1st, and we'll, we'll make the end date August 7th so that we have a week's worth of data. Then let's change the resolution to hourly. And we can deselect the output variables that we had previously selected and reselect our variables that we'll, be, that we'll be considering for this particular simulation. So for this simulation, we want to have as a control the outdoor temperature for this specific Boston climate during this week. So I'll click on the site outdoor air dry bulb temperature. Then I'll scroll down to zone operative temperature which is a function of the air temperature and the mean radiant temperature in the space, also considering the um, wind speed. And so I'll click this. This will give us an interior zone in, uh, operative temperature, and we can compare that to the site outdoor air temperature in our results. So once I've selected that, I'll hit OK. And now I'll run the simulation. So when the simulation is complete, I will navigate to this directory where we are saving our results file to look at the CSV output in Excel. So this file is saved in ArcSim results and then in the hourly subfolder. The file that we want to look at is the hourly.csv. So here we have a spreadsheet where we have three columns. The first is the date and time. The second is the um, site outdoor air temperature, and then the third is the zone operative temperature in degrees Celsius. So if I use the line graph generator in Excel, I can visualize the temperature profile of the outdoor air shown here in blue, and then the zone operative temperature shown here in red. We can see that the zone operative temperature is 
well above 30 degrees for most of this week, even though the outdoor temperature is dipping um, in and out of the comfort zone for most of the, of the period. You can also note that because there aren't very many peaks and valleys in their indoor temperature as compared to the outdoor temperature, we can see that our, our roof, and floor, and wall assemblies, which have concrete on the interior of the zone, are playing a part in, um, in terms of thermal mass for uh, heat storage, and it's controlling some of the peaks and valleys in the temperature profile. However, the, the temperature throughout the week is also ac accumulating, and we can see that there is pro there's an overheating problem during this week. So let's take a look at what is causing this overheating by looking at the energy balance for a specific day. So I'll go ahead and change this simulation. I'll call this balance. And I'll change the name of my directory to balance. Now I'll run the same model, but I want to modify the settings in the energy plus component so that I can isolate the specific gains and losses that are going on within my space. I'll also, to make the legibility of the graph that we're going to be generate a little bit, a little bit easier, I can limit this graph to just the last day of our simulation, August 7th. I'll deselect these, these output variables. I don't want temperatures uh, for this particular simulation. Rather, I want to look at the components of the heat gains and heat losses to understand what's exactly contributing to that overheating on that day. So I can scroll down to a few of these variables and um, select some of the, those components that are contributing to the heat gains. For example, the people total heating energy, the zone lights electric energy, the zone electric equipment, electric energy, the zone windows transmitted solar radiation energy. And we can look at also the contribution of the opaque assembly elements in here. And um, we, while we don't need to, to select all of these variables, of course, we can choose a few of them that might be playing a role in the heat gains. So the zone infiltration, total heat gain energy, our infiltration rate is relatively low, so we don't expect this to be much of a contributor. But these are a few of the heat gain elements that will give us a picture of what is contributing to some of these um, high temperatures in that particular period um, that we were looking at. Now to get a sense of, of the actual energy balance, I can also turn on zone ideal loads total cooling energy. Well, this, this isn't necessary to identify, obviously, the, the heat gain components. This will give us a, an idea of the amount of, of cooling energy is actually needed to counterbalance some of the, the heat gains that are going to be um, playing a part in the overheating of our space. So I'll press OK. And because I, cl I clicked zone ideal loads total, heat total cooling energy, I'm going to go ahead and turn the cooling on just for this simulation to get a sense of the balance. So I'll go over to conditioning and cooling. I'll go ahead and click cooling. So this is going to show now that we're, we've selected cooling and we have the zone ideal loads total cooling energy selected as an output, it will show us the amount of energy that's needed to maintain the, the 26 degree temperature set point inside our space. So I'll go ahead and click OK. Now I'll run the simulation and we'll take a look at the CSV output when it's done. So I'll go to the ArcSim results folder, and now I have a new subfolder that's created called Balance, and I'll click on that Balance CSV. So here we have now a CSV file with a number of columns. Each column, um, we have one for the date and time, and, each, and the other columns for the, res for the outputs that we had chosen for our simulation. I'll expand these a little bit. So we can see that we have people's heating energy electric lights, energy, electric equipment, electric energy. We have windows, um, solar radiation. We have surfaces, um, total conduction heat gain energy, zone infiltration energy. And then we have the zone total cooling energy. I'll consider this cooling energy a heat, a heat loss, a heat removal. So for our graph, I'll go ahead and make these values negative. So I will copy a negative one and select all of the items here in our graph and right click and say paste special and then I'll go over to multiply click OK 
So this is now converting all these values um, from positive to negative. This will put the, these values in the bottom of our graph. I'll delete this and I'll just click here on this cell, this first cell, and make a line graph of our results. So you see that now, now that I've visualized in graph form these hourly results for the for this one day, August 7th, you see that there are some line graph, some lines on the positive side of the graph, and then there's one line on the negative side of the graph. And this is the cooling energy that's needed to maintain 26 degrees Celsius within our zone as a result of all of these heat gains. You can see that there are various heat gains having to do with opaque surfaces, um, conduction energy. We have a couple that, are, have, that have a similar profile that are for people energy and equipment electric energy that follow the profile of the occupancy schedule that we assigned. And most importantly, we see this one large peak of um, energy gains, of heat gains, and that corresponds to the zone windows total tra transmitted solar radiation energy in joules. You can see that this is the major contributor of the heat gains in our space, which is why the cooling begins to peak during um, the midday in, um, in response to the, the heat gains and then largely in response to the solar radiation energy. A lot of this solar radiation is, or some of the solar radiation is being absorbed by the materials within the space, the, th the thermal mass of that material, but this energy is a major contributor to the overheating that we were seeing in our previous graph and now the, the cooling load that we see in this graph. So by reducing these tra this transmitted solar radiation energy by changing the window material, we can redu well reduce the amount of cooling that would be needed to maintain the, the energy balance. We can also see if we can passively um, reduce the temperature profile enough so that our resulting temperature is within the comfort zone without any cooling. So I'll go back to ArcSim, and I will make a few adjustments to run our hourly simulation one more time. So I'll go back to the thermal zone settings and I will change the conditioning settings back to no heating and no cooling, making sure that the cooling is turned off. I'll take a look at, at modifying the window type in our zone. I'll go ahead and change the glazing construction from double pane clear to double pane low E2. So this means that this has a low emissivity coating on the number two surface of the IGU. That means that's the back of the outside pane of glass in the insulated glazing assembly. So this low emissivity coating is going to reflect some of the um, solar radiation that is incident on the glass, and this will help to reduce some of the transmitted solar radiation um, and heat gains into our zone. After selecting that, I'll hit OK. And now I want to make some changes to the simulation settings um, for the Energy Plus component. I'll go ahead and change the name of my simulation back to hourly, but I'll give it a low E tag. And I'll do the same for the subfolder where I'm saving my results. Now I'll go back to the settings for the Energy Plus component, and I will deselect all of these results that we had selected. I will only select the outdoor air dry bulb temperature as we did previously. And I will also select the zone operative temperature. Before accepting, I want to remember to readjust my run period. I want to run another hourly simulation for the, the week of August 1st to August 7th. I'm actually going to compare the temperature profile with a new with my new glazing to the one that we were looking at previously. I'll go ahead and set um, select OK now. So now that these settings are adjusted, I'll we'll run the simulation. Now I'll go back to my ArcSim results and in my hourly low E subfolder, I will open up this CSV file. So the zone operative temperature now for my low E glass on uh, in my zone, I'll go ahead and copy the this entire column. And I'll go back to that original hourly profile here. And I will paste this column next to my previous results. 
And looking at this graph, I will expand my graph to incorporate this, the, the zone operative temperature for my low E scenario. And I'll modify the name of this as well. I'll call it example zone low E. So you can see now that whereas previously in red, the zone operative temperature is well above the 30 degree mark, 30 degrees Celsius. With the change to the low E glazing, I've brought down my interior temperature profile to in between 25 degrees Celsius and um, it gets into the upper 20s and it does, re it does get quite hot um, near the end of the week owing to the inertia of the thermal mass in the space and the increased outdoor temperature. But much more of the space is within the comfort zone, um, which could be with adaptive comfort um, in, the kind of in the mid to upper 20s. And um, at the very least, this will reduce the cooling load that's required to maintain a comfort temp comfortable temperature with the cooling turned on in our space as compared to the baseline glazing that we were looking at previously. So lastly, I'll go back to ArcSim. And we'll take a look at how to plot the temperature and relative humidity for our thermal zone for the entire year. I'll go back to the thermal zone. I want to make sure that I, I still have in the conditioning settings, no, no heating and cooling. I'll keep the windows, the, uh, the window type the same. And now I'll make a modification to the name of the simulation. I'll call it hourly year. And then I'll call this hourly year as well in terms of where I'm saving the directory where I'm saving my results. Now under the settings, I'll go ahead and make a change to the run period. I want to go back to making this run period from January 1st all the way through till December 31st. I want to look at the whole year. I want to keep my resolution hourly, but I'm going to deselect the output variables to start from scratch. So I will select the zone air temperature by scrolling down this list, the zone air temperature, and the zone air relative humidity. With, this, with the temperature and the relative humidity, I'll be able to plot the results onto the psychrometric chart. And I'll press OK. So I'll go ahead and run the simulation once more. And now instead of opening the results in Excel, I can take the outputs of this simulation and plot it onto the psychrometric chart using the psychrometric chart component here in the analysis tab. This psychrometric chart component requires a temperature and relative humidity input. So I'll need to, I need to load my results using another grasshopper component, the load result file component pictured here. So I can plug the model output into the model input of this component I'll place a Boolean toggle onto the canvas to set this output to true. And I will select our example zone and then the air temperature and air relative humidity outputs here in this column. Now we have a list of results here in, in, this, in the output of our load results file component, although we have 8,760 um, temperature and relative humidity values, and we have a tree with two different branches, one with the temperature and one with the relative humidity. So in order to divide that up into two output streams, I'll go ahead and place the explode tree component onto the canvas. And that will give us our first branch, which contains the temperature data, and then our relative humidity branch. And I know that the order is, is um, temperature first and relative humidity because of the list, the order with which it appears here in the load results component. I'll go ahead and play and plug these in accordingly. And once I've done that, you can see that the component will preview the psychrometric chart in the Rhino viewport. It defaults at 0, 0, so I can set a new point by right-clicking on this input and saying set one point. And now I can move my start point over to a, a spot where it's easier to see. You'll see that all of the points of the the points, the coordinate points where we are, are plotting temperature and relative humidity are appearing here on the psychrometric chart. And we have some indication of the comfort zone as well.
We can customize this chart by using the custom preview component and providing a color swatch. We can provide different colors for the different output components, uh, components of the psychrometric chart, but I'll keep things simple and just make it all a kind of dark gray. And by holding on shift, I can plug in the multiple outputs of this component into the preview. One thing I can do is I can remove the comfort plots from our custom preview to see those dots which are within the comfort zone. Why don't I go to plan to make this a little bit easier to see. And we can also use a text panel to evaluate the, um, the number of comfort um, points in our psychrometric chart. So we can use a, a list length component to quantify how many points are within the comfort zone and how many points are outside of the comfort zone. So today we looked at how to take a simple single zone thermal model and run some hourly simulations to see the temperature profile of a space and to evaluate the um, improvement in reducing the solar transmitted solar radiation energy and reducing the interior temperatures as a result of um, improved glazing for our model. Thanks a lot, and I hope you'll join me for the next tutorial.